Hello, my friends. You all know that I love Priority Bicycles. Priority Coast. Priority Apollo. The Priority 600. The great thing about Priority. Their bikes are amazing. But what's even more amazing are the people behind the brand. And for a long time, I've wanted to make a video about the team and about why I love them so much. And I could do that here on Zoom, but nah, this is a great excuse to go to New York City. You gotta run, get your wallet, get your van, buy house. So I've worked with a lot of other brands in my career, but Priority is different. It's not just a business relationship, they're my good friends. Okay, you be good while I'm gone. And now it's time for step two of the adventure, the airport bus. <laughs> 20 minutes till I board. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Did it. Whew. Feels good. We're gonna get back. Look at that. It's the Empire State Building. Oh, look what I found. I'm riding in New York City and I feel really good. 174 Hudson. This is the place. All right, let's go. Hey, what's up? Oh, it's so good, good to see you. Good really to be here. This is Dave in real life. Oh, what's up, Connor? Oh, this is Eddie. What's up? Oh my God. So I've never met Eddie in real life till right now. I exist. He exists in real life. And this is the guy he behind. Exists. He's the guy behind the 600X. If you're loving that bike, it's Eddie. All right, so I have not been in this office before. I've been in their old office, and Dave's gonna show me around. Normally, you enter the showroom over here. Uh, when you get in, pre-pandemic, we had a really solid row of bikes. It showed off everything that we're doing. Currently, it's uh, we're out of most things, so not a whole lot of bikes over there. Uh, we've got our photo studio here, where Ben does all his magic. Nice. Video editing uh, over here. A lot of our custom decals come out of here. And then as we uh, round into here, we'll go through marketing, inventory, and uh, logistics and get into our product. And hey, it's Greg. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Greg, hey, it's, it's Connor. Connor. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that. Did How you design you? that one? I did. Yeah. It's me. I like the 80s one. You guys are 80s babies. We're, we're working on shades of purple and shades of red. Ooh. All of our R&D and product development. You got Eddie. Who? There's my man, Eddie. We've got Rebecca. Hi, Hi Rebecca. Hi. Nice and to Cody, meet you. And Cody, of course. Most Hi, of Cody. Cody. Hi, Cody. Hi, Cody. Oh, did I scare you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Darren, Darren nice to meet you, man. How you doing? Cheers, man. Thank nice to meet happen. you. And uh, our mess of bikes and bike stuff that we're constantly working on. <laughs> this is pretty cool, man. And now you're here. And now I'm here. Hi, Dave. Hi, Connor. <laughs> How's it going guys? Uh, how did this all happen? How did we get to be here? So I was working in software. I had a one-year-old and I was traveling a ton and I really was yearning in my heart to do something super meaningful and hopefully be home a little bit more. I was getting a little burnt out from travel and from all the intangible aspects of my work and I had had this idea of making low maintenance bikes. It had been sitting on my computer in a file and I started to think, gee, maybe now's the time. So I took the leap and I quit my job. I called up my good friend, Connor. That who, guy, look at that mustache, by the way. Ooh, nice. And I said, anybody with a mustache like that can help. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so Dave called me and I remember it was a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And at the time, like Dave and I, so Dave and I have known each other forever. And I think it's one of the things we've been really lucky about is Dave and I met as freshmen in college. And we've stayed friends through a lot of different parts of our lives. And so sometimes it can be hard with somebody you know so well, but it's been a great journey. And he called me up and, I, and he told me that he quit his job and he wanted to do the bike thing again. And I always knew Dave had this huge passion for bikes. And so my first reaction to him was congrats. Like, I'm happy to hear that you quit your job. Because even you know, at that time, we, even though we were really close, we hadn't been talking as much because we were both so busy. So of course he said, hey, I have a terrible offer to make, which is to help me out. Do you want to do it? And I said yes. And so Dave had this idea of this low maintenance bikes. And uh, I had been working in digital advertising and had uh, a very similar feeling of being burnt out and not really sure what the next few years of you know, my life was, was going to look like. And Dave and I both had that in common. So he said, hey, I have this really great idea. And I said, hey, well, let me. It's all right. So he said <laughs> he, had, yeah. you. That's okay. <laughs> he had this really great idea for this low maintenance everyday bikes that we could deliver direct to customers and have awesome customer service. And I said, great, well, you work on that. Let me help out with that storytelling. And what we thought was gonna be this one low maintenance bike, our Priority Classic, now our Classic Plus, um, is now over 14 different models that aren't just recreational and cruisers, we also have commuters. And now because of this amazing partnership with Doozer, we have these really great adventure bikes that are literally taking people from a half mile jaunt to grab groceries or coffee in the morning or ride with their family to multi-day, multi-state, multi-terrain trips that still come back to that phone call saying like, hey, I wanna make a low maintenance bike. How do you just start a bike company? So I had some experience in sourcing bicycles and in automating supply chains from my days in software. So Connor and I started working on the branding side of it and we made a pitch deck on how our low maintenance bikes would be different and why factories would want to work with us. And then I flew to Taiwan and I met with about a dozen different factories and said, here's my idea of a low maintenance bike. And of those dozen, I think nine of them told me to get lost. Uh, so that left us with three. <laughs> and then we started working with those three factories to figure out how we can make the best low maintenance bike. Once we got a prototype we were happy with, we went to the Kickstarter community. I wanted to put together a company to bring a product to market that really doesn't exist today. And we will always be grateful for the Kickstarter community who completely embraced us and helped fund our project. We raised $550,000 in 30 days and we sold our first thousand or so Priority Classics, and the rest is a little bit history. You know, we, uh, we started, that, that got us going. We started producing bikes, we started listening to customers, started improving and adding new models, adding more people, adding more offerings, and the company's been growing very organically since then. Yeah, we'd love to, we'd love to say that, you know, whether it's a bike company or anything, that there's a secret sauce or a secret. And I do think there's things at different milestones where it helps to have some expertise. But what it comes down to, it's like a lot of things in life is you just have to get out there and try and start. And so we've done a really good job as a company of just challenging ourselves to try new things and do new things. And if they don't work, we let it go and I think that's helpful that we have a really supportive environment here and so like you know if we try an idea and it's great fine like move on and because of that we have found pathways to new models by just listening to what customers say or because someone here is passionate about something we say you know what like if you love bike packing like let's talk about how to make a low maintenance bike packing bike like let's make that happen and I think trying a lot of things not being afraid to fail um, being able to move quickly off of things that aren't working great have all been little pieces along the way that have helped us grow I would say also extra kindness extra kindness extra yeah. kindness yeah. extra kindness is yeah. definitely part of the secret sauce you know we get um, <laughs> we get uh, we, hundreds of customer service emails and messages a day and kindness is certainly a huge part of that um, you know being a, a direct to consumer bicycle company is a hard thing because you know people are getting their bike and they want to get on and ride and sometimes they just have questions about it so you know kindness is a big thing of us 
wanting to let people know that like we're here and we're real people and Dave instilled that from day one and saying like we're only as good as our last review from someone and we really believe that every day so you know, our customer service team here is awesome because they can literally be reached on any method of communication any modern method of communication we probably have a fax machine somewhere but um, they can reach out and ask a question as simple as like hey is this my right seat height? Yeah, send us a photo. Like, we'll tell you, you know, what we think. Um, so, you know, we really do want to be here and present for people every step of the way. So we are 365 from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. East Coast time. You can call, email, text, WhatsApp, Facebook. Instagram. Instagram. Twitter. Tweet, uh, we don't have a fax. That is not true. We do not have a fax. Do not fax us. Um, our fastest response is via email and text and WhatsApp. Those get to us quickest. But uh, we're just here to help. And so we've really tried to build out an organization of folks that some people specialize in fit. Some people specialize in bike maintenance and gear tuning. Some people specialize in flat tires, right? So we've really tried to create a group that can triage whatever anybody needs and get back to people quickly. Our average response time on email is about 10 minutes. You kind of just said, oh, you quit your job, you went to Taiwan, it, you made it sound easy, but it's anything but easy. Yeah, I think, you know, I was hearing from you last night, and I, I know this, how hard everything you do is, yet in your videos, it all looks so easy, right? And even when you look miserable in your videos, you don't ever admit you're miserable, maybe for a millisecond, but then you turn positive. There's nothing been easy about starting Priority or running it day to day. It's really, really hard. But we love it, and that's what makes all the hard work worthwhile. Uh, you know, I was here till midnight last night. Connor and I are constantly working till midnight or later. Uh, it's a really hard business. It's really hard getting a business off the ground. It's really hard making sure that we make great products that our customers love. And, and by the way, sometimes we fail at that. And so then you gotta admit it, and you gotta fix it, and you gotta make it right, and it's all really hard. But we love it, and that's what makes waking up every day and coming in here great and talking to all of our customers and all of your followers. That's what makes it rewarding and, and makes all the hard work worth it, right? I probably won't go run an ultra to see how hard that is. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, not probably not. Uh, no, you definitely, definitely won't. Not. I definitely yeah, won't. Definitely not going but to I, I think that there's a, a lot of hard parts of this yeah. that, that people don't see, and it, it does, I think, kind of like your videos, it all looks easy. Uh, it's just all really rewarding. Yeah, it feels good. Feels good. We were talking about the metaphor of like, if you're not ready for practice, you're not ready for the big game. And I think that's the same thing here is like, if we don't do the research, we don't put in the work, we don't test things, we don't try things creatively, we don't tell the story on the video, then you know we're not in a position where somebody should love the bike as much as we do. So I think it's just about showing up every day and like putting that work in and continuing to push so that you know, when someone has a question, you've got to answer for them. Or if somebody, you know, has an idea that we think is a good idea, we're in a position where we can test it and try it. Uh, and that stuff isn't easy. And it's just about showing up every day and doing it. You know, you've mentioned low maintenance bicycles a few times. What does that mean? How does it differentiate from other bikes? It's a great question. So when we started the Priority Classic and every model since then, we look at the bike and say, what market are we going after? Who is our customer? And how can we make the bike as reliable as possible? What can we do to take away all the problems that might fail when you're on a trail? Obviously really important in bike packing, but also really important, for example, on our beach cruisers. We make a beach cruiser that is very rust fighting, uh, knowing that you know, the elements at the beach are one of the hardest things to keep a bike alive. So we really try and look at every single nut and bolt, and whether it's something like the gearing and putting a pinion gearbox on, or an Enviolo CVT, uh, trying to look at the gearing, how do we make it reliable? Of course, at the heart of Every single priority bicycle is a Gates carbon drive, which is the most reliable drive system, far more reliable than a chain, maintenance free, no rust, no lube, lasts two to three times longer. And then it's every little piece, the brakes, handlebar, the seat, make sure it's comfortable, make sure it's gonna last a long time. Uh, nothing on a bike is forever. Everything eventually needs maintenance, but we want bikes that are always ready to ride. So whether you're going bike packing or whether you're a daily commuter or whether you're just riding with your kids every couple weekends, we wanna make sure that you can put air in the tires and go. Yeah, there's a lot of things about bicycles um, for everyday riders is a lot of things that keep people from riding are 
a lot of the things around the bicycle themselves, right? So a lot of people have the intent and the desire to ride, but what happens? They get a flat and they're like, well, I just, I had a flat tire. This bike is now just gonna get slammed in the back of my garage. Or if you're, you don't ride in the winter and you got your bike in the garage and all of a sudden like holiday boxes and cars and all the other junk golf clubs get sort of put on the back and you got this big, heavy, clunky bike in the back and you're just not gonna take it out. Well, what we wanna do from an accessibility standpoint is help make it so that you don't have to take your bike to the shop all the time. So let's put puncture resistant tires on there. We don't wanna deal with you having to haul a big, heavy bike out, you know, just to go for a ride so we do it with this rust rust proof aluminum so those little things are great um, those little things are just great opportunities to help with the accessibility make an everyday rider just feel super confident about their bike and being able just to get out and do the thing they want to do on it what are you most proud of with this company ah uh, gosh i think the two things that make me really proud so i'm going to give you two answers not one one is every day when i come in here the team that we have is just so alive and vibrant and passionate about what they do. It's very rewarding to come to work with people that you want to work with and that want to work with you and that love the products and the people they're working with. And by people, I mean not only internally, but externally. They love our customers. They love our products. We believe that any day that starts with a bike ride is a, a day with a smile. So I love that we do that. That's one. The other thing is that and you and I went for a ride yesterday. We, we saw a couple priority bikes on the ride. Every time I ride by somebody on a priority bicycle, it gives me a huge smile and it's a lot of pride. So to me, those are just two proud things uh, that make every day great. Seeing our bikes in the street and working with our people here. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling to walk into work every day and not feel we've all been in that situation of a feeling of dread of having to get up for work. I've never had that feeling here. And no matter how hard a, a day has been or if I haven't wanted to do something, I've never felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. And I think that's a great feeling and experience to have. But even more than that, you know, Dave talked about the team and I think that's the number, always gonna be that number one thing. But the other thing is that we always have a new challenge here. So every day we come in and maybe it's a creative one because we wanna figure out how to tell a story around a bike, um, or we're talking about new models to launch, or you know, we've gotten a bunch of customer feedback that they want you know, a different kind of bike and we can get in here and try and figure out how to develop it. So I think that's really exciting that there is always something on the horizon. There's always another conversation to have with somebody. There's always something creatively to execute. And that's just a great feeling uh, to have here at Priority. Yeah. Just a kind of an overarching uh, bike question. You know, you want to put more bikes in the world. You want more people to ride bikes. You said it, you know, every day that starts with a bike ride is a, is a great day. You know, uh, what does the future of Priority look like? And uh, where are you going to take these bikes? Where's the innovation going? We're definitely continuing to add a low maintenance bikes all over. So you saw it last year with us bringing the Apollo, our first gravel bike, and the 600X, our first real off-road adventure bike. We're going to be expanding in those categories. We're expanding in the recreational categories. Uh, and we're expanding in e-bikes. E-bikes are a big part of the future uh, of transportation, not only for cyclists, but for non-cyclists to get back on a bike uh, or to use a bike instead of a car. So you'll see many more bikes from us in terms of the categories and pedal and, and certainly the, the category of electric. How did we meet? People always want to know how we met. It's a pretty cool story. Let's do that. All right, here we go. It was a cold winter day in Minneapolis. I'm thinking February 2017, is yeah, that right? January, yeah. February? Yeah. The sidewalk we're riding on is just glare ice. Check this out. <laughs> it's like ice skating. So we were doing a media event. It was our first media event ever and we chose to do it in a nice, warm, exotic location. February in Minneapolis. Yep, riding around Lake Calhoun. Lake, Lake Calhoun. The idea was a, uh, an ice, a, an iced over lake ride. This is fun. Around Lake Calhoun in Minneapolis in the dead of winter. Yeah, to show that the bike would perform and perform well. I tell people all the time, if you can start and end your day with a bike ride, it can't be a bad day. We put together a media event on how you can ride in Minneapolis in the winter and of course having a low maintenance bike that performs well in all weather is a big part of that. Ryan was invited to it and we instantly fell in love. 
It I was think, love. Love at first sight. Love at first bike ride. Uh, I think there was just great passion for, we love riding bikes. We love bikes that don't fail. We love bikes that you can ride year round. And we instantly connected on that. And I think we've stayed friends ever since. And we've been super grateful for you to be riding our bikes and giving us your feedback and support and opening us up to your viewers. We're grateful for the support of you and of the Doozer TV community. Olé, olé, olé. I think the joy that we saw with you at the event was like, yeah, this is why we're doing it and this is amazing. And it set that foundation for a relationship together that was just about the joy of getting out and riding. Yeah. And I think that's really so parallel to everything we've done here at Priority. Nothing has been easy. Everything has been painstakingly <laughs> difficult. But at the end of it, you smile and you're like, wow, all that hard work was worth it. And what a great time we had. And then we got out on the bikes and they were awesome. And we met cool people. And that's what it's all about. It really doesn't matter if it's summertime or wintertime, whenever you're on a bike, you are smiling. It was meant to be, it was destiny, my man. Was. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my man, Eddie. Boom. First time I'm meeting him in real life. We talked it? on the phone how many times? A million times. A number of times. Yeah, but, a number uh, of times. Mostly just to say what's up, how you doing, <laughs> you riding your bike today. Yeah, exactly. So Eddie is the, the brainchild, brain man behind the 600X and a lot of the other innovation here at Priority. Uh, what's your background in bikes? Like what brought you here? That's a good question. Um, I grew up messing around with bikes and I mean, I like to think it all started with Legos, but uh, I was always taking stuff apart in the garage and putting it back together. Um, I would kind of go around the neighborhood and pick up random bikes at yard sales and put them together into monster bikes. Um, I was fixing my friend's bikes since, you know, pretty early age. Um, so I always kind of liked the mechanical aspect of bikes and kind of the freedom it gave me to ride around my neighborhood and go explore to get out there, if you will. Um, so it's always kind of been a passion for me. Um, when I uh, got out of college, I was looking for a job and got a job at a, a nice reputable bike shop here in New York City. And, Kind of worked my way up to the management level, uh, moved around to a couple different bike shops in the area, and uh, worked in 3D printing for a little bit as well, which sort of gave me a taste for the product development process and kind of technology and how you can incorporate new technology and innovation into a product. Um, and uh, through a twist of fate, I happened to see a posting for a job my dream job in a lot of ways here at Priority Bicycles, and uh, Dave was nice enough to give me a shot. So I came here with a lot of ideas and, you know, it's been a really great environment where people support you and support your ideas. And um, I feel incredibly blessed and fortunate to be here with such a great group of people and, and been given the opportunity that I have. And this, my friends, is the lovely Lauren. And you've been with Priority pretty much since the beginning, right? Since day zero. I've since been here day since zero. before we launched our Kickstarter. How'd that happen? So friends of friends introduced me to Dave and they said, you know, this guy Dave has this amazing idea for a bicycle company. Go watch him start this company. You're going to learn so much. I thought it was just going to be a fun summer project and a crash course in starting a business. Seven years later, I am still here working side by side with Dave and Connor every day. And it's been so incredible to be a part of the evolution of this team, to grow with the company. And the most exciting thing is that we went from being a really small team of just a few of us here in New York City and two people down in our Pennsylvania warehouse to a huge team of really unique, fun, and smart individuals. Quick, Nelson, look like you're working. Okay, so this is Nelson. We are in the customer service. Yes, exactly. It just <laughs> slams on a keyboard like that. So I have not met Nelson in real life until... This week, it's really cool. He's helped me so many times mechanically. He's probably helped a lot of you as well. And I just want to talk to Nelson about what you do every day, how you help people, man. Yes. Uh, so please excuse my hoard pile, but this is part of my madness that I do every day. Um, for instance, customers uh, will contact us, letting us know, like, hey, you know, something is broken um, uh, or something got bent in shipping. So I find the parts and ship it out to them. Hey, hey Benjamin, what do you do here? Uh, I'm the financial planning manager, so I handle a lot of ops related stuff, um, you know, inventory purchasing, uh, management, and stuff of that nature. So I hear you're the guy that knows, like, when, if somebody orders a 600X today, when they can maybe get it. 
Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> that's uh, That's the number one question. When can we question, get our six hundred X? Great question. We get about five hundred of those a day. But uh, I mean, we're we're trying to crank these out as quickly as we can. You know, the entire supply chain. You know, not even for our industry is just a mess right now, unfortunately. But you know, we're doing what we can. Hey, wait a second. Who are you? I haven't filmed you yet. <laughs> I was hiding. You were hiding. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Excited. <laughs> What's your name again? Rebecca. Rebecca, what do you do here? So I work for yeah. customer service. I work for, I work with Lauren with fleets. I work with Eddie on product. I try to do a little bit of everything here. Right on. Cool. It's great to meet you. High five. And you also <laughs> speak Spanish. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my first language. Hablamos en español entonces. <laughs> and this is Greg. Greg, what do you do? What's up, guys? What's I up? do uh, social media, some marketing, help out Connor with all kinds of projects. It's fun. Yeah. So good if anybody times. sees cool stories on Instagram, it's you. <laughs> That's me, right here in the flesh. Right on. So what people should like post and post and post, and then you will repost all their post stuff. Post and post and post. Tag us at Ride Priority, at Priority Bicycles, and uh, yeah, we'll reshare and get it out to the world. All of you are so amazing. I love you all. My beautiful New York hotel room. I don't want to leave, but it's time to go. Ah, now wasn't that better than a Zoom call? Now I didn't just go there and interview Connor and Dave and harass all the other employees with my camera. We did a lot of other fun things. I actually set up a public presentation on one of the nights and people came from all over New York and beyond and it was really fun to share stories and actually see people in real life. And then the next day, we all got on our bikes. We're excited, we are very excited. And rode from Manhattan all the way past Yonkers, way out north to Sleepy Hollow. Yes, the real Sleepy Hollow from the stories. Yeah! I also got to see Eddie rock out with his band. He is a man of many talents and went on a great run with Connor and Lauren all over lower Manhattan. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. yeah! Look at that, it's New York back there. Oh my God. And it was just really fun. It was a great trip to New York City. I hadn't been there in two years. And the point of this whole extravaganza was to just see my friends because that's who they are. They're truly my dear, dear friends. And now you know why. I love them so much. They are just really good people. I would say also extra kindness. Extra kindness. Extra yeah. kindness. Yeah. Extra kindness. It's yeah. definitely part of the secret sauce. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a long video, but uh, you know, sometimes it takes a long time to tell a story. So thank you so much for watching this. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you down the road for another adventure.